This is the new Dacia Jogger and it's a little bit like this seven bedroom property I found in Middlesbrough because while it's not exactly desirable, it can accommodate seven for very little cash. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk you around the design, the interior, and see how practical it really is. Take it for a drive and launch it. See how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss any of these review videos. Buy, sell, Car Wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the design of the Dacia Jogger. And the first thing you'll notice is that the taillights look like they've been copied from a Volvo. The rest of the car is rather unique. And in some ways, it's a bit of a strange sausage, this one. So it's part MPV, like, you know, the big tailgate, slab-sided body. Then it's part estate car, look at the length of it. And it's also part SUV with the lifestyle bars and the, the cladding and slightly raised ride height. Then at the front, it's part Dacia Sandero, the UK's cheapest car. And this is the UK's cheapest seven-seater. You know, it starts from just over £15,000. This is the range-topping version, which costs an eye-watering £17,745. And you can save a bit of money up on through CarWow. In fact, if you want to see how much money you can save off this or any car, click on the pop-out banner up there. I'll find the link in the description below to go to CarWow. Alternatively, if you want to do that at a later date, simply Google Wow Me CarWow and we will wow you. Here on the inside, the Dacia Jogger feels nicer than its price suggests. Because yes, there are lots of scratchy plastics, but the design is nice. And on this high specification version, you get this squidgy trim. It's fabric and, and here as well, it matches that. And it just lifts the cabin. And then check this out, right? You've got climate control buttons, which have a feel to them, which is way more expensive than this car's price point. And you've even got these little digital displays in them for the settings of the system, and it's just like those you get on a £130,000 Audi R8. This particular version's got heated seats as well, and you get this touchscreen. Now, it's fairly simple, but it's got all the main functions you want. Plus, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and they're wireless. And look, you can do this as well. So there's this little phone mount there where you can mount your phone, and you can plug it in there to that USB port. There's another USB down here and a 12 volt socket as well. The layout of the instruments is neat and tidy. It's not fancy, but it's all very clear. And the driving position, yeah, you've got a lot of adjustment in the steering wheel, which is good. And it's leather, which feels surprisingly expensive, actually. I just wish they managed to fit the controls of the stereo on the steering wheel itself, rather than on this horrible little stalk behind it. Then there's the seating position, which you can jack up so high because you've got quite a lot of headroom here in the front. You can sit up like you're in an SUV. Now let's go back down again. That just look weird, doesn't it? Anyhow, the seat's nice and big and comfy. And this is quite practical. So you've got a big area there. You can store bits and pieces. You've got some cup holders here. And um, because the armrest is quite high, you don't end up banging your hand on them when you're changing gear like you do in some other cars. There's a little bit of storage under here. The glove box, <laughs> yes, there's a fuse box in there which eats into space, but it goes back quite a long way, so it's not such an issue. Door bins, decent size as well. I've also noticed this, that this ledge here, the way it has this hard right angle on it, it's perfect for just like resting in between those two bones in your elbow, so you can just drive along like that. Hmm. Here in the middle row of the Jogger, it's good. So knee room, yep, yeah, enough of that. Headroom, loads of that. Bum space, well, on this bench, three decent sized seats. And well, there is a little bit of a hump in the floor, there is enough room for everyone's feet. Now with that seat, I've got it in its lowest position and you can just about stretch out underneath it. This seat, which is a bit higher up, look, you really can stretch out. And that just helps make you feel a bit more comfortable on longer journeys. If you need to fit one of those bulky rear facing child seats, the doors open nice and wide, so it's easy to get in. The Isofix anchor points are quite easy to locate, and there's plenty of room. You don't have to move the front passenger seat forward either. You've also got some decent sized door bins and a 12 volt socket there. I think that's enough. I think there needs to be some more USBs for people to charge their mobile devices in this middle of row. Anyhow, let's check out the rearmost row. Is this going to be terrible? Let's find out. This is actually pretty good. Knee room's good. The seat is high enough from the floor so you don't feel like your knees are too high and in a stress position. Headroom back here is good. And look at this. There's not many seven-seaters that I know have 
windows that you can actually open in the very, very back. There's some cup holders here as well. And under this armrest, there's actually a little bit of extra storage. Don't know why there isn't that over the other side, but there you go. You've got a 12 volt socket here so you can charge some things. I'm actually really impressed. This is a very spacious, practical, good value car. Now let's check out the boot. Now before I do, I want to point this out. So most car brands will actually paint on their logo or it'll be a badge. It's, it's stickers on this. 3D effect stickers, but stickers nonetheless. Anyway, the boot. So, oh God, <laughs> got to move out the way, otherwise it'll hit you. So you can fit two airplane size carry-on suitcases in this boot in seven seater mode. You've got 160 liters of space, but a Skoda Kodiak has 270 liters of space when you have it in seven seater mode. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll follow the link in the description below. Now, if you want to go into five seater mode for some more boot space, you do that, then you pull, come on, this is fiddly, get your fingers in there. Come on, you can do it. And you tumble that forward like that. Oh, right. Go do that again. So down with the wand. Come on, you bugger. And then pull that. And then you have in five seater mode, 700 litres of space. You might think, oh, they're kind of in the way. Well, you can actually remove them. Pull that down like that. 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 And then lift. So these weigh about 10 kilos each. It's not the lightest, but they are manageable. Let's just get them out. Oh. There's a bit of a knack to it, but there you go. Then you got that much space. If you need more, obviously, oh, you have to go around. And then tumble these, which, is easier and for late. And then there is loads of space like that. Although it is a touch rudimentary. If you want a clever folding system in a car, maybe check out something like a Peugeot 5008. To check that video out, click on the pop-out button up there or follow the link in the description below because I'm a little bit out of breath. Which brings me on to five annoying things about the Dacia Jogger. I feel like I've been for a jog. There's a huge and weird difference in magnification between the rear view mirror and the door mirror. So you're looking at something in the door mirror and you think, oh, it's quite far away, I'm fine. Then you look in there, it's like, oh my God, it's right in my ass! The Dacia Jogger scored just one star out of five in the latest Euro NCAP safety tests. Mm, terrible score. Now there is a bit of a convoluted reason for that. And what I'm gonna do is put the details in the pinned comment and then you can let me know whether that will put you off this car or not. The clutch pedal has a very weird action to it. It's almost like the mechanism is sort of filled with glue because the first part of its return travel is all stodgy and slow and then it suddenly springs up. And what happens is you press it with your foot and then you remove your foot like that and it slowly comes up and then whacks you at the very top of the travel. Watch this, look, see what I mean? See that? Look how slow that is, then bang, odd. Look where the seat belt is for this person in the middle of the middle row. It's up here, all the way up there in the roof. I think you slide it through here, like that. And then you have to obviously lock it. It's that way, isn't it? Yeah. Then that one in there, then that one in there. But look at that. We've got people in the back there. That's just so shit. There's no place to store the load cover in the boot. Like that. Unless you have it in its usual location. You know what that means, don't you? Yeah. Anyway, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about the Dacia Jogger. All models come with picnic tables on the front seat backs as standard. And look, there's a little area for your drink. Obviously only for a small cup because the tall bottle won't fit because of the shape of the seat, but I'm not gonna complain about that. These roof bars aren't just for show. You can actually load 80 kilos of weight on them. And look, you can switch the design up so you can move them so they're, oh dear, the paintwork, oops. It's all right, it's been PPF'd. <laughs> you can move them across like that so you can mount bikes and stuff to them if you want to. I've got to stop throwing things. Some cheap cars have really puny stereos, yet all but the entry-level version of the Jogger come with a six-speaker system, which, while not brilliant with quality, is at least loud. Have a listen. 
buy, sell, car. Wow. There's a little seatbelt buckle retainer there, so you don't have to worry about it flopping around when there's no one sat in here making a noise, nor it getting snagged when you fold the seats down and put them back. There's a little hook down here which can hang things off to something rolling around the footwell, such as, I don't know, your, your hat. Or maybe a hammock for your pet hamster. At the moment, you can only get the Dacia Jogger with one engine and gearbox combination. It is a one litre turbocharged three cylinder petrol with 109 horsepower and 200 newton meters of torque driving the front wheels via six speed manual gearbox. Now, this car is quite economical. Dacia claim 48.7 miles per gallon. I've actually averaged 48.5 miles per gallon. Now you might be put off this car though if you want something with an automatic gearbox, but don't worry, a hybrid is on the way. That'll have a 1.6 litre four cylinder engine mated to an electric motor and an automatic gearbox. However, if you want to see what my favourite Dacia Jogger is, what I'm going to do is configure it. So there's three different trim levels to choose from, and I'm going to choose my favourite and get an offer back from Carwow. And if you want to see what the model is and the offer I got back and the saving, click on the pop-out banner up there. I'll find the link in the description below. All right, let's see what this Dacia Jogger is like to drive. I'm going to start off in a village. And the first thing I notice about this car is the suspension is really, really compliant over bumps. It's very smooth when you're going slowly, and you drive over a pothole or you go over speed um, or if you're going quicker it's actually much better than you'd imagine in a car at this price point it's very very good and it actually shames some far more expensive cars the way it just deals with imperfections in the road so the steering is light which is handy and the turning circle is acceptable so look i could just about make it around here it's 11.7 meters by comparison a skoda octave is about 11.2 meters so that's fine also the visibility is good you're sitting up relatively high for an estate car so decent view forward big back window blind spots aren't bad large side windows and reasonably sized door mirrors as well gear change it's light it's accurate there's a bit of a notch before you finally get in gear but that's fine it just lets you know you've got it slotted home and the brakes are progressive and strong enough the only thing is that clutch of course well light got that stodgy feel to it that i showed you a bit earlier Overall though, it's a good car for town this. When you get out to faster roads such as motorways and dual carriageways, you do notice a problem with the jogger and that's its engine. It just lacks performance really at higher speeds. If you want to overtake someone on a motorway, it's really slow and laborious. In fact, the increase in speed you get when you floor this car in six gear is about as discernible as the movement of the hour hand on a clock. What you have to do is double drop into fourth and then thrash the arse out of this engine. Come on! And then you can finally get past things. I wonder what this car's gonna be like with seven people in it. Even at lower speeds, you're gonna notice that lack of performance. Could be a bit of a pain. Tell you what's not a pain though, noise. It's reasonably quiet in here, even when you're traveling at speed. Don't really get much road noise, and there's only a bit of wind buffeting from around here. Finally then, let's see what this car is like to drive on a country road. Now, it's really important that it's super sharp and sporty, otherwise, Dacia have failed in their mission, haven't they? And yeah, the steering, it's a bit slow and light, and vague as well. The car leans a bit when you go through a turn. The acceleration's just not quick enough. I'm talking nonsense. None of that stuff matters. All it needs to be is competent through the corners, and indeed it is. You've got enough grip, the car goes where you point it. It's fine. It doesn't quite have the finesse of the bends like a Skoda Octavia. In fact, if you want a car with plenty of space that's still good value for money, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my full in-depth video review of that car. But really, overall, this jogger is impressive for what it is. Remember that, that bit is key. It actually says this jogger will do 0 to 60 in 11.2 seconds, but I'm going to find out with my specialist timing here because it's dead important in this test. Let's do it. Oh, bit of wheel spin, but managed by the traction control. The clutch is not helping with this gear change, the stodginess of it. Come on. My gear changes were brilliant, by the way, but what's an 0 to 60? Here he comes now. <sighs> 10.86. Better than they said. This car is better than expected in so, so many ways. I quite like it in a strange way. Okay, final thing to do, brake test from 60 miles an hour. How long is it gonna take this thing to stop? Here we go, braking now. 33 meters, which is actually pretty decent. Here's some other cars for comparison. Not bad for the Dacia, huh?
So then what's my final verdict on the Dacia Jogger? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Really, my only complaint with this car is that the engine could do with being a little bit more powerful. However, I can't fault it when you consider the price and how much space you get for your money. So if you want a seven seater car that's really good value, go right ahead and buy the Jogger. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you didn't, let me know why in the comments. Click on those windows there to watch some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWay to see how much you can save on your next car.